Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. Okay, we have a question came in to customer service from Jay Perriman, and he says, in watching the Home Run Derby this year, I guess that's at the All-Star Game, and watching the slow-mo of each player's swing, it is shown that the ball is hit before the wrist break. Isn't this what we are trying to do hitting the golf ball? I always thought that when I topped the ball, it's because I did not stay down. As it turns out, it's because I am breaking my wrist too early and hitting the ball with the bottom of my club. Do you have a good practice to ensure I don't break my wrist too early? Breaking the wrist too early can also cause that dreaded word that starts with a SH and ends with a K. Jim Perriman. Okay, Jim. First off, let's go back to the surge rules. Of, of hitting a golf ball. Surge first rule is golf is a game of angles. The fewer the better. And I call the number one angle the, the left wrist. There is no wrist breaking, wrist cocking, hinging, setting, or whatever you want. There is no wrist break in swinging a golf club and in swinging a baseball bat. What's happening is is your arms are rotating. Your arms are connected to a ball to the shoulder in a ball and socket joint. The whole unit rotates. Alright? From the tip of the finger through the palm, wrist, forearm, upper arm, to the shoulder, it all rotates together. And if you have a good palms perpendicular to the ground grip, what I call the 3P grip, the prayer position grip, palms perpendicular to the ground, perpendicular to the torso, and if I line up dead parallel left of my aiming line, my palms will be perpendicular to the topic line, so that's a 3P position. But the key is the prayer position. If you were, to, if you were to put your hands in front of your body, like you see, you see people sometimes standing there for a long time, at, and, and, and their hands are here. They don't put them over there and they don't put them over there. They're right in the dead center of your body. Now when your hands come up in the dead center of your body, they're going to come into the prayer position every time. All right? Palms perpendicular to the ground, torso and a target. So with a parallel, parallel left for a righty and parallel right for a lefty is set up. Now when I have that, what happens is now the hands have become diametrically opposed to each other. And so whatever one rotates, so we got pronation and supination. All right? So as one is pronating, the other one's supinating and back and forth. So as one's turning a little bit to the, towards the ground, the other one's turn, the other palm's turning skyward. They're always perfectly matching each other. That's why it's so critically important to have, to have the, uh, a perfect palm's perpendicular prayer position grip. All right? And to make sure that the face is in alignment with that. So this way, no matter what the palms do, the, the face is going to do it. Now, in most cases, a lot of pros talk about the back of the left hand is, is your guiding rope. I want the palm, I want my right hand. I always think of my right hand because my right hand is the club face. Whatever my right hand's doing, the face is doing. If I have that 3P prayer position grip with the face perfectly in alignment with the palm, that is straight up and down the leading edge. Okay? So, once I'm in that position, we have a little bit of rotation. In it catches with toe up and up the tree. Come back to impact, it squares up. In it catches with toe up and up the tree in a forward swing. So what we have is forearm, well, our, our entire arm rotation, but we have a controlled degree of rotation. Again, if I put a, a, an alignment arrow on the ground, and I'm going to line it up to the, to the target being my, being the, uh, the camera, so that you can be seeing relatively a dead straight line. Pretty good there. When I take that club away, with a little bit of rotation, kind of in the catch's mitt, toe up, I got a very controlled amount of, limited amount of rotation. I could rotate all the way to there, to, 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 the, to the face dead skyward, even a little bit beyond that. But if I did that, I'd have a really flat swing, I'd have way too much turn, I'd be coming down. Yeah, it might square up at impact, but it's still very likely not going to be hit too square, I mean too, too, too straight, because that amount of rotation, the, the club will be coming in. Even at that split second of, of rotation, it'll be very likely to, 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 to face over-rotating, smothering the ball, and I'm going to hit something very likely left. And then once I try to stop that, and I start under-rotating, then I open up everything to the right. So it'll be in the mid-toe up and up the tree. I come back to square. I got the limited rotation to toe up on this side and straight up to where my, my the toe of the club and my thumb comes up and over the shoulder and then I then I get to recall and relax. So we're doing a very limited amount of rotation. If you just follow this thumb up right here, all right, I'm just going there to there, back to there where it's the point straight out towards the target, which is there, then it goes here and then thumb up and over the shoulder. 
into the forward mitt and up the shoulder. The thumb and the, and the toe of the club are basically in, are working in sync together. So when I, when I always say toe up, it's always toe up and the thumb's going up, the thumb's up and the toe's up. They're both here now. The thumb and the fit, the toe is out there. The toe and the thumb and the right thumb is, uh, the lower hand is, is straight up out to the target then up and over the shoulder and then now back pointing at the target where the, where the toe is looking at the target. It's a controlled degree of rotation of the entire arm in a ball and socket joint. There is no wrist break, cock set, hinging, or whatever in a golf swing. It's the whole unit, tip of the finger to the arm where it's connected to the ball and socket joint. It's rotating in that ball and socket joint. All right, so that's why there is no wrist cock in the golf swing. The whole key is coming in there, and when it comes down to there, it's guaranteed by the way your arms rotate. They always cross at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock's impact. So it's right here. It's going to come back to that every time. Just a slight rotation up and down. Very limited rotation. We control that with the vigilant, the mental uh, imagery in our mind of in the catch's mid toe up, comes back to impact where it squares up into the forward mid toe up and over. We're controlling our rotations with maximum speed going through impact because it's guaranteed by our anatomical design, by the way God created our body, that we will get right there every time at impact. Guaranteed every time with a correct grip, correct club face, and, and doing the limited rotation as is, as is achieved by the imagery of the inner catches mitten up the tree on both sides, back swing and forward swing. Okay? It's the whole unit works, not the wrist. Good wrist action is no wrist action. All right? I try to keep my wrists as firm as I can throughout the swing, and that way my arms rotate faster into impact and up the swing, up the tree, which increases club head speed, and it hits the ball more solid straight, very likely longer, and therefore hitting the ball better, keeping it in play, will help you shoot those lower scores. So hopefully this breaks down this, or uh, it puts to rest this concept about wrist break. There's no wrist break in any sport, including baseball. We've got bat batters hitting, hitting home runs and grand slams, okay, and especially hitting a golf ball. Well, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.